Hello, hello, hello. I'm Kendra. I love to watch. This is the weekly watch list. And today, we are finally getting back to Fallout. Episode 2. The Target. Alright, let's get into it. Hello. Welcome back. I'm Kendra. <laughs> Um, finally, we are back to watch more Fallout. I'm so sorry, you all. It took me, uh, it took me a minute. It took me a hot minute. And it's, uh, uh, life, life be life and man, you know, a bitch gotta work. A bitch gotta work. Uh, I'm a freelancer, so I'm basically working around the clock if they can get me and um you know it's it's been a little tough i won't lie about that um and also i've been having all these weird technical difficulties i i don't know what that's about I, you know if it's not my sound it's my picture if it's not my picture it's the lighting if it's not the lighting it's something there's something going on so you know i do apologize for that i'm trying to save so i can get a new camera and a new microphone and a couple of other things that i need um so yeah it's it's just a one woman show right now you know so there will be some inconsistencies sometimes but i'm hoping um that eventually i'll be able to just keep chugging along um maybe even hire an editor <laughs> one of these days um but anyway that's neither here nor there um welcome back to fallout uh, the first episode just blew me away. I really loved it. And so we're back for more. First, I have some shout outs to make before we, before we go any further. I just want to think, hold on, I gotta, it's my memory. Ermagerd 8306 thank you very much for letting me know that it is not Walter Groggins I think is what I was calling him it's Walton Goggins um sorry Walton well, right up there with Adele Nazim Arswind for reminding me uh about the video game stuff that's yeah, you're right. You're very, very right. It is based on a video game, and I'm sure I'm going to see even more things, especially with all the blood and guts that we saw. Uh, I know there's more coming, so I'm going to try to keep that in mind. I'm an empathetic viewer, and I get really caught up in the world, especially if it's good, and, you know, it, it really hooks me like this one has, so I might get a little passionate about things, but it's okay. I'll calm down. You know, I have a sense of humor about it, I hope. And thank you to Hengineer for just sort of clarifying some things about, you know, the people. I don't know where I got that immortal thing. I thought I saw it on, like, um, one of those new rock stars videos, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I just misinterpreted that. Maybe it was some other video. I watch a lot of those videos about video games and TV shows and stuff, so it I, I get mixed up. But thank you for clarifying. The people are not immortal. Ghouls just live a really long time because they're mutated, I guess. And, um, you know, the whole thing about the technology being sort of pre-transistor invention. So I guess that's why it's stuck in the 50s. Thank you for that. And Jokester3076 for explaining a little bit more about the power armor. Um, and that it's a little bit more lightweight. Although, I, I gotta say, I, it still looks cumbersome and not like something that I would want to wear. Maybe you do feel powerful when you're wearing it. But for me, it's, it's it just, I'm claustrophobic, so... It does not look like a good time. I don't know. We're going to do episodes two and three because um, I want to make up for lost time. Um, and I just love being in this world. So here we go uh, back with Walton Goggins. Yeah, let's react to episode two of Fall. The caption says that there these are dogs but uh, they don't look like dogs but someday the sun okay this is gonna be an interesting one so these are lab grown pets got it this is the guy and the dog from the first episode, The Target. Okay, that's, yeah. This is called The Target, okay. Duck and drop. What are these dogs for? 
sit. Sit. Good girl. Some rain is I love dogs. I'm no good at having one. They they will not listen to me. <laughs> I'm not good with the training, but I do love being around them. Who's put that in his brain? Oh. Oh. What is it? Normally I would be like, there's no way he would survive that, but video game stuff. I guess he just put it really deeply down into his ear canal. That is, um... That looks uncomfortable. <laughs> You're not supposed to have this dog. <gasps> he gonna go for the alarm. Oh, you gotta, you gotta kill him. I mean, isn't that what you were raising her for? Basically. It's time to grow, bro. Oh, shit. How is he not getting shot right now? Hey girl, okie dokie and stuff. Oh my god. She's so bright eyed and bushy tailed, lord. In the middle of the desert. <laughs> it's just a tumbleweed girl. <laughs> that makes me. Okay, okay. This is gonna be interesting because she really has no idea what the hell it's like up here. Up there. Girl, do you have a compass? Do you know where the hell you're going? Ooh, did, they, did they get caught in the blast? Oh. Oh, damn. Whenever there's an apocalypse, there's always a family that offs themselves. It's kind of a trope at this point. You're gonna, whether it's in a video game or a movie, there's gonna be, or a TV show, there's gonna be a, a room with uh, a family that has unalived themselves rather than face the end of the world. Wow. She has a little thing she recites so she can... She made a little teepee. <laughs> Girl, what are you doing? Uh, somebody gonna come and find you. You all out in the open. Oh, girl, you all out in the open. Are you gonna make a tent for the fire, but not a tent for yourself? Mm-hmm. What the hell is that? Oh! Oh! What's it, Kelly? What is it? What is it? I knew they were gonna run into each other. Oh, that was creepy. I knew they were gonna run into each other, but I didn't think it would happen so soon. Before the war, people joked about cockroaches surviving a nuclear blast. But they didn't merely survive. They there was a cockroach. There was a cockroach! Oh, there was a cockroach! Extended antennae in order to... Oh, I hate bugs. Hacks, incisors to help ingest larger prey, such as yourself. Yeah, dummy, why are you out in the open? She was about to get ate up by a freaking cockroach. Fire after dark. Sir, I'm looking for my father. He was uh, kidnapped by this woman named Moldaver. Have you seen her? Listen, you need to go home, miss. Vault dwellers are an endangered species here. You come from a world of rules, of laws. This place is indifferent to all of that. Uh-huh, yeah, I agree. I'm sorry. You're cute. I'm not going back without my dad. But uh, maybe you should learn some survival instincts beyond the Girl Scouts, babe. Then you will have to adapt. The question is, will you still I want agree. the same things? When okay. You will become a different animal altogether. Ooh. Ooh. 
that's going to be her character arc. That's going to be her journey. When she reaches her dad, what is she going to find? And is she even going to like what she finds? You know, sorry. Allergies. Now, uh, everything's, everything's going, going wrong. wrong. Everything. Everything. Okay, good old Maximus. I think it looks like the same helicopter thing. Where are they going? My lord, Titus! Is Titus going to be a jerk? Let's see. That's how you get around with your squire? Oh, it's not that far, bro. Oh! Okay, so basically Maximus went from being bullied at his camp to being bullied by his knight. Essentially. That's what this looks like. And dude just go fly off? You gonna come back? Or? Is this one of those, like, you, you must, must survive, survive in the wilderness, wilderness without me for 24 hours and then I will know that you are worthy to be my squire. I guess wherever he's going, he has to pass through Philly. I'm a little confused about the timing of everything that's happening. Like, is this before they got the news that he broke out? I guess it couldn't be in real time because they had to fly quite a long ways, it seems like. It's not like they, they had telephones. I guess they had... What the f***? I'm running my mouth and I'm missing this carcasses! Oh no! Oh! Something's in the cave. Maybe he ain't gonna make it, champ. They might have to just find his body and take his head and get that chip out of there. A man? Oh, did he get ate up? No. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's something in there. There's something in there. So you guys should probably go. I guess if they think the target is in there, then they should investigate. But still. Go see if the target's in there. <laughs> my, my lord, I, I don't have armor. You are in a suit through acts of bravery. This is an act of bravery. My lord, I... In order, my squire. Can I get a flashlight? What the f is that? What the f is that? Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Yo, he just shrunk that shit off. That is a mutant. Ah! Ah! Bro, you need to do something. I, I don't know. Use your busters. Baby. <laughs> I should feel sorry for him, but I don't. I don't think shooting it is. Oh. <laughs> Where were you? Huh? I know that guy. Please. This wasteland fucking sucks. Stupid missions for remnants that turn out to be fucking toaster. Get me a step back. What the fuck are you doing, man? I'm asking you. A stem pack. Step back, and you're looking at me. <laughs> you're looking at me like you don't know what to do. <laughs> I got a two-ton irradiated bear on my back, and that, you're standing. That's there. a freaking bear. You stupid motherfucker, you know this is all your fault. Uh oh. You know what they do to squires? That don't do their fucking job? Uh oh. They string you up, Maximus, by your uh, lungs and they uh. What? They hang you. That's what they're gonna do to you. <coughs> <coughs> they gotta be the worst squire there is. 
Bro, I don't know if it's a good idea for you to be threatening this dude's life while you sitting there coughing up blood in a helpless position with no stem pack. Look at him. It is a knight's duty to better this fallen world. You don't deserve that armor. Red rum. Red rum. Red rum. Uh oh. Maxim, look. Uh, look at that look on his face. That's some murder. That's a red rum look. Mm, buddy, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I don't know if I'm like scared or like kind of turned on a little bit. Maybe a little both. Look at this. Look at him. Red rumming all over the wasteland. Slicing ankles. <laughs> Anytime anybody's like in a suit and they show the face and then there's music playing, it's like Iron Man. Tony Stark kind of ruined it for, <laughs> for everybody else. You just gonna jog the whole way? Whoa. Maybe, maybe calm down. You don't see, you don't broke a whole damn. All right, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe calm down a little bit. Did you hurt somebody? I've been persecuted for my scientific curiosity. <sighs> oh, I don't like him. You, sir, are a scholar and a gentleman. I don't trust nobody out here. I'm sorry, okay? Don't murder me. It's just... I think I was f***ing my chickens. Ew. 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 See? Okay. <laughs> Girl, girl, please, you're gonna run into the wrong person and they're gonna kill you. Uh, I'm alive, you, whatever, you know what I mean. I like the way that little shanty town market looked. And these little tunnel things. So, this is. Philly. This is so video gamey. I love it. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, don't. No, no. Take that damn backpack off. <laughs> I thought this whole Girl Scout thing was cute, but now you just look like uh, you just stick out. You just stick out, girl. Like a fresh country bumpkin first time in the city yeah it's the ghoul I love that yodel shit hi there I noticed that you have an assortment of vault tech equipment mm -hmm. and uh, well because these items technically belong to vault tech <laughs> it would be safe to assume that you do business with criminals girl Ooh, sh Ooh. I'm actually looking for one criminal in particular. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Holy shit. You're an actual vault dweller. Yeah, yeah. I am. <laughs> There's nothing to be proud of. Shits for dead Barb, get in here. You gotta see this. Uh, a woman in her 50s, I think. Barb! Goes by the name of Barb, Moldaver. Mm. I guess everybody does know who Moldaver is. Room, Barb. I take it you know who she is? Everyone knows who Moldaver is. Get out of here, Vault Dweller. Ma'am, this Moldaver broke into my vault, 
took my dad. I don't and, think and and I'm she cares. You, you're gonna go through a whole lot worse if you stay around here. Yeah. Trust me. Clean hair, nice teeth, all ten fingers. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> well, well, you see, the idea is that. What is the idea? We're going to save America. <laughs> and when exactly were you planning on saving America? The vaults were nothing more than a hole in the ground for rich folks to hide in while the rest of the world burned. Yeah, sounds like it, yeah. You know what folks up here say about the vaults? Jerry, you better get the f*** out of there. <laughs> Pretty much, honey. Thank you for your help, ma'am. Yeah, of course you you got your vault number and everything on your backpack, dummy. Oh, girl. You should really be taking that bespectacled man's advice. <laughs> I, I liked her cute thing at first, but now it's... I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Now all we need is uh, Maximus, and everybody will be here. Really think you should go home? You are not safe here. That's what people keep telling me. You should listen. No one understands my situation. Nobody cares. You come from Vault Thirty Three. You've been brought up in a meritocracy where people pride themselves on doing the right thing. I think I know enough to know you need to go home. Uh oh, we waiting on you. Or you wouldn't happen to be a doctor, would you? <laughs> Cause I happen to be looking for one. Be a kind ain't welcome here. Well, maybe not. But I'm gonna make myself welcome. Huh. Last night a bounty came in through all six agencies. A hefty price on the head of a man that fits the description of that fellow right there. Maybe. Hmm. But I've been paid a whole lot of caps to provide this man safe transport out of Philly. Caps? Whoa! Ho ho! Change plans, I guess. Oh. Oh. I got a thousand bottle caps for whoever kills that Bottle caps? But you don't get shit if I kill him first. I mean, how do you kill a ghoul? What do you just... I guess it's the brain? He doesn't seem too phased about it. Damn! Oh! Woo! Those bullets are... Hey, yo, whoa, whoa! Y'all just throwing yourselves at the bullets at this point. Damn, y'all ain't got me working up an appetite. Huh. Yeah. Mm. Dude, shit. whole foot is gone. Ooh. Yeah, like yeah, he's he's a some zomboy zombie. He's a he's a freaking walker. You got a hole in your neck. <laughs> Ooh. Aye. Yeah. Uh oh man, this is such a video video game scenario. You gotta like hunker down. And pick pick off the uh, NPCs one by one, or I guess enemy PCs. Woo! Don't hurt the doggy! No, don't hurt her! Oh, oh! I'm unfamiliar with your circumstances. 
As a person simply trying to de-escalate a conflict, then I'll have to assume of the two of you, you are likely the primary aggressor. Girl, In which case, there, what, weren't you told that nobody gives a crap about vault dwellers? Please. <laughs> This man just survived a whole shootout. I <laughs> know, girl. Ah! Oh. I wonder where he was gonna shoot her. Was he gonna kill her? I hope you done practiced. Knight Titus of the Brotherhood of Steel, stand down or be cut down. You gotta be f kidding me. Mm, I guess he was gonna kill her. Hi. Look at these two yokels. Y'all belong together. Is important. I've been sent here to find him. Get him inside and keep him there until I've dealt with a ghoul. Well, his gun don't seem to. Whoa, that's a big ass gun. Oh, 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 bro, where you? You just gonna leave it there? I guess you can't really bend over. See, that's what I'm talking about with this thing. It seems cool, but look. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Let me quit talking shit. Well, I'd say come up here and get me, but. It's hard to walk upstairs when you're wearing a 12-piece cast-iron skillet set. <laughs> <laughs> the ghoul is hilarious. Trying to eat my beans. Barb is chilling eating beans while there's a whole shootout outside. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. He can make it to breakfast. Barb! Box with the defibrillator. You keep moving things around without telling me. I don't mean to interrupt, but was that a knight? Don't nobody care. I'm sorry for yelling. Been shot in the leg. <laughs> you yell at me the way. That's the foot. Oh my God. Oh! Oh! Limping ass across the wasteland, you may not be as smart as people say you are. Do you have anyone else you can trust in this town? Shit. What were you gonna do? Was your old ass gonna do it? I need you to take this man here to my client. Oh, ah, uh, thank you. Uh, but I'm really only here to find my dad. My client goes by the name of Lee Moldaver. Hmm. Now. You ain't getting near Moldaver without something to bargain with, and delivering this guy right here is your best option. Well, what does Moldaver want with you? I mean, she steals dads. <laughs> Do you want your dad back or not, kid? <laughs> Gosh damn it, okay. Uh, no. Gosh damn it. This is where you're gonna find Moldaver. She and her kind hole up across the shithole. What's the shithole? The uh, shithole? Well, just just get to the coordinates. The <laughs> she can't even, she don't even say nothing about it, okay. So, you're gonna need to move fast if you wanna keep your skin. This could may, maybe work. <laughs> <laughs> no, girl, she don't mean that. Having himself a little moment. Damn. Rule number one read the manual. <laughs> oh, 
shit. Cage on your head, bro. Oh, puppy. Oh, it's that video game shit, the stem pack. I mean, this dog was grown in a lab, so there's no telling what it can do. <laughs> yeah. And did the wound like disappear? Of course it did. Because that's his dog now. Or maybe he's gonna use it to find the professor guy, the doctor guy. Man is walking through the desert with a chopped up leg bone this will have to and a metal foot. It says here we have about 20 miles left to go. How's your new oh, oh golly. I'm not going to make it. Yeah. Doesn't seem like it now on that. I don't know who you are or how you know the things that you do, but you are going to get across that wasteland. No, you see, I've just taken a cyanide pill. What? The Vault Tech Plan D. It was the most humane product that Vault Tech ever made. It was quick, painless. Really? Tasted like banana. Tastes like banana. You know what the hell are you taking a cyanide pill for? You can change the future if you can bring me to Moldaver. How the hell is she gonna do that, bro? But how am I gonna bring you if you're you know, not not my whole body? Ah, uh, just my head. The plot thickens. Yeah, I figured. Put the chip in the head. Ooh. Ooh. So that it would be less taxing for you to go through with it. You're asking me to... Please. Ooh, girl, well, maybe this will thicken your skin a little bit, toughen you up a little bit. Throw Dad back. I knew I could trust you. But if you're going to survive with me, you need to start acting like a surface dweller. He's giving you good advice, ma'am. How do you know that? My name. Of course he does. Where are you going? What, what are you going to do? Who are you going to call? Oh my god, hands and feet and just everything going everywhere. I love that. That was an 8.5 and let's talk about it. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Um, it Things are escalating quickly. They've already like met up in the Philly place and that whole scenario like from her, you know, arriving to town and being just so naive um, and getting like clocked immediately by uh, the old ladies, Ma and Barf. Um, I love them. They're hilarious together. And, you know, classic um, video game NPCs, but also just fit perfectly in this sort of television show adaptation of the game. Um, and then the ghoul shows up and there's this big shootout, another classic video game trope where you gotta like, you know, basically clear out a territory or whatever and uh, then, you know, rape that shit and take all the loot. Um, so I really enjoy that. Bottle caps? For real? That's the currency? Okay. I mean, sure. It's the end of the world, so why not? Um, and then Maximus, his journey is really interesting. His whole thing, um, where he has like this naive, you know, sort of 
wide-eyed, almost as innocent as uh, Lucy, uh, demeanor and perception of the world, but at the same time he has this dark side that gets triggered when like his um, his dreams and his sort of coping mechanisms are challenged. So, you know, the way that he's idolized the, you know, the knights and always wanted to become one only to, you know, look behind the veil and realize that they're not all so honorable and that they are just things about, you know, his heroes. You know, you never, you should never meet your heroes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That um, aren't that pleasant. Um, and then his response to that is, you know, red rum, it, you know, the, the red veil comes down and, you know, he, um, after seeing this episode, I'm pretty sure he did put those razors in his friend's uh, boots. I don't know if they knew about that or if they worked together with him, but um, it just seems like, especially the way he just dispatched that knight, um, played by that guy, I, I, I can't remember his name, I'm really bad with names, obviously, um, but I know his face and I've seen, you know, his work, uh, before, grew up with him, um, <laughs> it's really funny that, that he turns out to be the knight Titus, um, he just, he just turned on a dime, turned that switch on, as soon as, um, Titus was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah you, they're gonna string you up by your lungs. lungs? He was like, oh, oh bet? Okay, okay, well, I'm gonna have to get rid of you. Um, and then he puts on the suit and, you know, has his little adventure. Um, his standoff with the ghoul was hilarious, and I, of course, knew that the ghoul was gonna win out. I mean, suit or no suit, like, you're gonna get somebody who's lived for 200 damn years and survived through all of that, and turns out is, so, you know, not only just a show cowboy, but a pretty damn good real live cowboy, so... Whenever they meet again, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. I, I'm going to, I'm assuming that they're all going to end up on the same side eventually, but maybe not. Maybe they might just keep being at odds with each other this whole time. I don't know how Maximus's relationship with Lucy is going to progress. I don't want to assume too much there. I mean, it seems like they're already having like that sort of like, will they, won't they romantic spark happening but they might abandon that you know the same way they did uh, for you know star wars remember that y'all remember that anyway sorry i didn't mean to poke at a wound um anyway so yeah really enjoyed that i'm holding out for more i know y'all say that episode eight is like the best episode but um yeah so i'm gonna see how we get there how we progress oh that girl had a chop off her head if you like what you see please like the video it really helps me out um, it helps me get seen by more people and uh if you want to see me react to more fallout and other things please subscribe all right i'll see y'all in the next episode peace